I think as far as the true nature of reality, if we even understood one-tenth of one percent of the true nature of reality, I would say that would be an overestimation. We don't know what the fuck we are, we don't know why the fuck we're here, and we think there's some kind of an invisible man in the sky. I mean, we're a bunch of cavemen who are worshiping the sun and fighting amongst each other. There are very few animals that kill their own kind. We're vicious, psychopathological beasts. And the only reason why I even bother to pay the slightest attention to this fucking world is because I love music. I love to write music and I want people to hear the music. Otherwise, this fucking world is an utter waste of time. It's a disgusting shithole. I did not aspire to be a musician. I didn't think of myself as a very good musician. I remember when I used to play the guitar in my living room and my mother would hear it, she thought that I was awful. And she didn't realize that I was making up my own chords and I was playing dissonant things and that what I was playing was what I wanted to play. I wasn't making mistakes, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Everything I did was experimental. Poetry that I wrote, everything, my interest was entirely in experimental work. So of course, the idea of taking a rock band and using the same kind of idea of experimentalism, different than, than what was being done. There were, there were good bands. There were bands like Henry Cow from England, you know, Fred Frith's band. And of course, there was Brian Eno. And I loved all that stuff. But I wanted to do a band that was coming more from the New York art world sensibility. The art world had kind of uh, fossilized. The old people completely dominated. Nothing new was allowed in. And we were all on the outside. The scene that would become uh, no way it wasn't called No Wave until maybe six months later after we started. And it turned out we didn't realize there were these other bands that had similar ideas, but they each had their own very, very different style. What we were doing was really embraced by the young artists who had come to New York. You know, people like Robert Longo and Richard Prince and Cindy Sherman and the list goes on and on. Julian Schnabel. I mean, they were all big fans. I mean, one reason why we were successful and some of the other bands were successful is because all these young artists were the ones who really liked us. It wasn't the CBGB's crowd. They just wanted to hear power pop, you know, uh, fake punk. It was bullshit what was going on at the time. And we, we, we were the, these noisy art bands, but we would pack the fucking place. And Hilly Crystal, who was the owner of CBGB's, hated us. But because we made him a lot of money, he had to book us. <laughs> Many people ask me, you know, why I say I write my music for myself. The answer is incredibly simple, because if I'm not writing it for myself, then what the hell am I writing it for? I'm the only one who knows how it has to sound. I want to write it so I love it, and if I love it, then I know it's good and that there will be people, even if they haven't heard me yet, 
who will someday hear me and hear, hear this music. And, and uh, I mean, in a sense, I almost think of this as being political because, because I believe in the individual mind. I don't like the mass mind. I don't like the sheep being herded over the cliff. I want people to think. That's what I do, and I don't see why everybody else shouldn't do that too. I'm usually pretty depressed when I wake up every morning. Then I have a couple drinks. Thank you. Uh, I don't participate very much. I like my private world. I'm not a public person. I'm not trying to expand my audience. I'm not trying to draw in people and seduce them you know, and get them to buy my records. And I'm trying to find the people that don't know that someone like me even exists. 